you can start now. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Facebook live show. I'm Dr. Rajeshwari, clinical head and fertility specialist, Banshankri Third Stage, Bangalore. Today, we are going to speak or discuss the topic or PCOS. First, coming to what is PCOS? Yeah. What is PCOS? PCOD. P patients do come and tell us, I've got PCOD, I've got PCOS. So we need to know what those terminologies are. PCO, polycystic ovaries. And what, when we see these polycystic ovaries, that is multiple cysts in the ovaries, on scan we call it as polycystic ovarian morphology. PCOD is polycystic ovarian disease. And PCOS is polycystic ovarian syndrome. Both And people do ask, what are these? Are they different? Are they same? Yes, they are both same. This polycystic, what we see on the scan, many of these dark ones, black ones, they are the uh, follicles, what we call them as cysts. Naturally, one follicle comes for the race every month. One follicle develops or becomes dominant. For that, there are hundreds of follicles which get into the race. Here in this polycystic ovaries, due to hormonal changes, which I'll be discussing or talking about in a few minutes, where there is, because of the hormone imbalance, they all get arrested at different stages of development and they remain as cyst. This is called as pearl, necklace of pearls. This is the way it looks like. That's why it is called as pearl or necklace of pearls and polycystic ovarian morphology of the ovary over scan. Polycystic ovarian disease was the terminology was used previously and now they use it as polycystic ovarian syndrome. Why do we say syndrome is there are many features seen in this polycystic ovarian women disease or syndrome women. Two or three different combinations will be seen in one person. So we call that as a syndrome. It's a set of symptoms related to hormone imbalance. So this hormone imbalance it gives rise to certain symptoms or features or what we call them as syndrome. This is one of the commonest problems seen in the women or the girls of reproductive age. It is also being seen in young adolescent girls and it is numbers are increasing every day. And coming again to the definition, def definition how do we define that? Defined and diagnosed by a combination of signs and symptoms by the rotadrum criteria, that is androgen excess. Androgen is the testosterone or the male hormone, which is seen in excess in these women. That's why they do complain of oily skin, then a lot of hair over the body like men or the face, upper lip, chin, sides of the cheek, then in the chest, abdomen and on the limbs. This is how it looks. That's why we call them as hirsutism. And oily skin and acne will be there. That is a lot of pimples over the, uh, over the skin, uh, on the face, back of the neck. All that may be there. That is due to this male hormone excess, androgen excess. Second thing is the ovarian dysfunction. They may, because of this excess male hormone, there will be increase of insulin levels as well. All this will give rise to dysfunction in the ovary. What I mean by saying is, uh, in saying uh, ovarian dysfunction is, the they may not ovulate, they may not get period because there is no ovulation, they may not get regular periods. So ovarian dysfunction happens. How does it happen? Later I will tell. Then polycystic ovarian morphology. That is what I already told. That is on the scan, what you see, polycystic. Many cysts are there. There will be about 20, 25, more than 20, 25 uh, follicles will be there which will be ranging from 2 millimeters to 10 millimeters and these features are given by the rotatum criteria and two at least two of them should be present to say that it is a polycystic syndrome and before we say that it is only polycystic ovarian syndrome there are other conditions which mimic or uh, will have similarity with PCOS that is hyperprolactinemia, even they can have irregular periods, they may not ovulate, they may have difficulty in conceiving. 
these are the features which and androgen excess can be there and congenital adrenal hyperplasia because adrenals also produces a lot of uh, androgen hormone or the main hormone and they may present to us with amenorrhea that is no periods regular they will not have regular periods the lot of hairs will be there they can have obesity so when we have a suspicion before saying it is only because of a polycystic ovary or the polycystic ovarian syndrome uh, we have to rule out other conditions these conditions and cushing syndrome all these conditions there can be excess male hormones irregular periods and uh, hirsutism so first when we come to when we have to come to the diagnosis rule out other conditions and to make sure that it is only because of polycystic ovary or the syndrome this all these features are seen the, again coming to the incidence incidence it has got a wide range of incidence it, in indian population it ranges from 8 to 22 or 26 percent and nowadays there is a increase in this polycystic ovarian syndrome that is because of our lifestyle we have a sedentary lifestyle and the way we eat all this is contributing to the increase in polycystic ovarian syndrome 30 percent of all infertility is associated with anovulation and 85 whoever is having anovulation, 85 to 90 percent of these are attributed due to pcos 21 to 20, 59 percent of the women in reproductive age demonstrate ultrasound features, only ultrasound features of polycystic ovaries. Then what is the cause for this uh, condition? There are many causes. Uh, it can be multifactorial and it, we cannot exactly say this is the cause for the polycystic ovarian syndrome. Main thing is our lifestyle what we eat that is the nutrition what we had day and the environmental factors environmental factors like all these plastics the room spray all these also do contribute whatever sprays we use do contribute for the development of uh, or hormonal imbalance which can give rise to polycystic ovarian syndrome and it runs in the families as well when one uh, female uh, uh, in the family has uh, polycystic ovary there is in the first degree relatives about 15 to 30% of them can have polycystic ovary syndrome as well. Then what, how do they present? They present, with, they may present, these, not all these have to be present in everyone. They may present with irregular periods or no periods. They can have very frequent periods or they may have a delayed period and some of them may not get period unless they take medication. And for some of them, if they start to have a bleeding, they may not stop. So all this may be due to the male hormone, which they, which is produced in excess in these women. That may be due to the insulin resistance. They produce, say for example, a normal woman or a normal human being may require about 10 units of insulin to utilize 100 grams of blood glucose to take up body to take up that 100 uh, grams of glucose. But in these women, they may have insulin resistance. Means to say the body doesn't sense the insulin which is circulating. So they may have to produce instead of 10 units to use that 100 grams of glucose, they may require 20 grams, some 50, some 100. So when they produce so much of insulin, it not only helps in uptake or utilization of this glucose, it goes and acts on the ovaries. When it acts on the ovaries, what does it do? It makes the ovaries to produce more of male hormone, that is the testosterone. This testosterone will have effect on the developing follicle, that is androgen environment will be there in the ovary and these will act on this hormone will have influence on the developing follicles so they get arrested they don't grow and come to dominance they all get arrested and they remain in the ovary like a polycystic ovary and because of that they don't grow and this hormone has influence this testosterone or the androgen has effect on that they get arrested so there is no ovulation they may not get regular periods and they may have difficulty in conception also because there's no ovulation. They mean it's difficult for them to get pregnant. Then because of this uh, androgen excess, this goes and acts on other part of the body as well. There is excessive hair growth on the face, as I already told, chin, upper lip, body, that is chest, back of the uh, back, at the back of the body and um, over the limbs. There is balding of the head, like men. You would have seen men do lose hair on the head, but they have 
hair, uh, strong uh, or dark thick hairs by the part of the body. The same thing may be noticed in these females as well. And because of this hyperinsulinemia or the insulin resistance, there is chance that they will put on weight. There is increase. There, it's very easy for them to put on weight, but very difficult to lose weight. And they, because there is no ovulation, they have difficulty in conceiving as well. And because of that appearance, a lot of hairs is there, a lot of pimples, acne, and uh, obesity, that is, they have increased weight, and they have a low self-esteem. They may feel, how do I look? What do people think of me? And there is chance of all this depression, psychological problems as well in these young girls. And then pathophysiology, I've already explained. One is the increase in this hormone called LH. FSH and LH are important for the follicular recruitment. That is the follicles, the eggs to be come to the race to develop and to ovulate. There is, there is a ratio. FSH and LH should be of almost of the same proportion. But in these women, there is excessive production of uh, LH, that is luteinizing hormonal. That also plays a role in causing uh, or arrest of the development or not proper folliculogenesis or not proper development of the eggs and ovarian synthesis that is dysfunction of the ovary as i've already explained and insulin resistant and hyperinsulinemia the pathophysiology every step i have tried to explain it's the same in more of insulin is produced and this hyperinsulinemia and the goes and acts on the ovaries makes it produce the testosterone or the male hormone that male hormone not only acts at the ovarian level, but it acts at the periphery as well. That is the hair follicular level and causes obesity as well. And how do we diagnose this problem? One, by ultrasound. Two, by the few blood tests. What are those blood tests we'll see? Ultrasound is the pelvic ultrasound. That is the vaginal ultrasound when we do. We look at the ovaries, tubes and uh, uterus as well. These ovaries will be bulky. They will be having more than 20-25 follicles which were ranging from 2 to 10 millimeters. And uh, the volume, because they are bulky, the volume also will be increased. And which are the blood tests what we do to say, yes, this is a polycystic ovarian syndrome that is FSH and LH levels we see as I told you they are approximately of the same uh, value but in these people that ratio will be altered that is 1 is to 2 means FSH will be uh, half of the LH level and AMH level because so many follicles are there they will their AMH will be very high it shows that higher the value it shows that there is resistance for the development of these follicles as well Another thing is the testosterone. We want to differentiate between the ovarian uh, cause of uh, uh, increase in testosterone from that of the adrenal cause or many different other causes which can give rise to this amenorrhea that is no periods, hirsutism that is excessive growth over the body and uh, not getting pregnant. So we need to do testosterone level to know whether it is ovarian side or other uh, side. Another thing is insulin resistance. When you do glucose tolerance test and insulin levels on fasting and one hour after the glucose, you will have know the, what is the value, whether there is <coughs> insulin resistance. And TSH, prolactin, we need to find out whether there is, these are also contributing for the problem. Another thing is when these have people, uh, polycystic ovarian uh, syndrome people do have dyslipidemia. Means to say there is excessive or altered uh, lipid profile that is the reason why we do the lipid profile and blood glucose level to see if the, as they have insulin resistance they are at increased risk of developing this uh, diabetes mellitus at a younger age so we need to have a watch over the glucose level as well and because of this uh, increased obesity and uh, altered hormone levels they can have a diabetes then high blood pressure the cardiovascular problems these are all the other health uh, problems which can they which they can develop develop I mean now coming to the treatment treatment will depend upon what the patient wants what are her symptoms whether she wants whether she is coming to us only for the uh, regularization of the period or coming for the excessive hair growth or due to obesity or she wants to conceive so it depends on that 
for whatever may be the reason why she is coming to us for treatment, the main and the foremost important thing is to advise on the lifestyle change. That is the very important thing because that can alter many things and help her out in the additional medical treatment what we are going to give. What patient wants and what are her symptoms as I told whether it is periods, excessive hair growth, fertility problem. And if you are coming to fertility problem, you have to come for workup. Uh, we need to know what is her age and what is the duration of fertil infertility she is having and what are the previous treatments she has taken for fertility. And what is the scan finding? Whether her tubes are patent? What is her male partner's reports? Whether it's the men analysis, what I mean to say. Whether what is the count like, morphology and motility. All this will have... Um, or to say all this will influence on the treatment what we are giving for fertility. Then PCOS and fertility. First thing, whatever it is, lifestyle change needs to be done. That is exercise and the diet. They need to be on a low glycemic diet. <coughs> One thing. And the regular exercise. They need high uh, intensity exercise, 75 minutes, at least twice a week or 150 minutes moderate intensity exercise a week needs to be done. Foremost is once the lifestyle is changed, eating habits, all the junk food or fried food, all these has to be reduced. Then coming to fertility uh, problem means ovulation induction with medication or injections. Along with that, certain since they have insulin resistance, certain insulin sensitizing uh, medication like metformin. Metformin is usually given for people who have diabetes, but here because of the resistance, which insulin resistance, which it can help in sensitizing the receptors and help the body in uptake of the glucose, we give we do give metformin. One thing is that, and it also helps in better response of the ovary for the um, stimulation and reduces the risk moderate moderate to a certain extent, not uh, totally reduction of hyperstimulation. When we give all this medication for ovulation induction, especially the injections, gondotrophins, what we give, there is risk of um, hyperstimulation that is they produce more follicles than fluid accumulation in the tummy. All this can happen. So it to a certain extent, it helps in reducing to the, that hyperstimulation. That is OHS is what we call. Another drawback of using this gondotrophins is there is in, because they produce more follicles, there is increased chance of when we are doing simpler treatment like ovulation induction and timed intercourse or ovulation induction and intrauterine insemination. They have a chance apart from a hyperstimulation, they have a chance of uh, uh, what to say, mul uh, high order multiple pregnancy like twins and triplets. Another thing is for whom do we do laparoscopic ovarian drilling? The people who do not respond to the medication when we give oral medications like uh, clomiphenicetrate or letros, these are the people whom you can give the option of um, uh, laparoscopic ovarian relay. But however, this is however minimal, uh, minimally invasive it is, it has got its own, it's a surgery, it has got its own uh, benefits and uh, side effects like anesthesia will be used. It, it may be a daycare but hospitalization will be required. There can be bleeding when you do the drilling and it can cause adhesions. That is, it can draw the intestine towards uh, towards one side to the pelvis and the egg ovary can be drawn away from the tubes because that tubo ovarian anatomy may be altered. So that is one of the things. But advantages, you can check the tube simultaneously. Another thing is when you do the drilling, it can, means to say women can, to a certain extent, this hormone imbalance can come down. It will not come down totally to near, normal, but it can, to a certain extent, this uh, impairment can get uh, reduced and they may start having more frequent periods. They may not get regular periods, more frequent. Ovulation may be there. They can try naturally. So these are certain advantages. And this, especially for people who do not uh, want to try, have uh, medication you can do this ovarian drilling or the people cannot come they are staying in a remote village they cannot regularly come for uh, follow up for these laparoscopic ovarian drilling is helpful if there is no pregnancy in a gondotrophin using ovulation induction or gondotrophins then 
that or uh, pregnancy doesn't happen, then higher treatment is required. Higher treatment will be assisted reproduction. Assisted reproduction uh, is the, that is the IVF or IVM. For whom do we do this IVM? For people who have a lot of uh, follicles, that is AMH is very high and they haven't responded properly for IV, uh, IVF or these, or they do not want to take the risk of uh, taking hormones, too many hormones, or they do not want to have ovarian hyperstimulation. For them, we can give them IVM. This IVM is, we, we give very many, either we do not give, or that is one way of doing IVM. Another way is we give very minimal medication for the follicles to develop very little. We take out the immature eggs, grow them in the laboratory, that is in the embryology lab, and then fertilize them like any other IVF after that, and then grow them for two to five days, <clears throat> sorry, three to five days in the laboratory and transfer uh, one or two or maximum two to three embryos into the uterus and conception should be expected out of it. Then this is the overall treatment gross. And the women who do not want fertility treatment, who are only wanting um, uh, regular periods, we can, and they have acne, that is pimples, and a lot of hair growth, for them, oral contraceptive pill should be ideal. And we should also advise them that at least uh, they should get periods once in three to four months or else it can have effect or the endometrium can go in for hyperplasia. So we should uh, advise every woman to have a period mistake medication at least once in three to four months and have period. Now coming to what at the end of the talk, what is the message to be taken home take home message one is early diagnosis we see a lot of adolescent girls having uh, P uh, pcos and it's very difficult for us to diagnose pcos in adolescent because many of the uh, symptoms are similar to that of the pcos so the way we have to first two years it is difficult to diagnose they also will have uh, excessive hair growth or oily skin then pimples irregular periods and on scan they can have uh, excessive follicles that is like uh, PCOS it may be difficult to diagnose that they are having PCOS so they may be having irregular periods then excessive um, uh, hair growth and um, uh, irregular periods but these people we need to cautiously take the diagnosis of PCOS and PCOS starts at a younger age so lifestyle changes has to be implemented or emphasized in these people so that their future um, uh, complications or manifestations of PCOS can be avoided or to be to a certain extent reduced in the adolescence itself. So early diagnosis is very important so that fertility part also can be taken care of. Then lifestyle changes, as I already told, it has to be emphasized and emphasized and emphasized that is diet, changing, having a healthy diet, then exercise, very important. Another thing is having, apart from treatment or having children, everything, after that, you need to have regular health checks. That is, you need to have your sugar test done at regular intervals, your lipid profile done so that you can have your blood pressure check so that you can uh, early detection of any cardiovascular problems and lipid changes can be identified and treated. These people also, because of their obesity, they can have snoring and apnea, which may be very, uh, what to say, because um, they may not be very alert during the time because they have a very disturbed sleep. All this helps helping them in reducing weight will help these people to overcome all this problem. So this is at the end, I would say lifestyle changes is the main important Thing in uh, handling PCOS. Thank you. If anybody has questions, please post it so that uh, I can uh, address it. No question seen.
one of my friend uh, ha has PCOD since 14. She got married five years, uh, five years. She have failed two IUIs and she went for IVF. But after injection given, doctor told that egg quality is bad. Is it the same for all? The quality uh, may be compromised because of this androgen uh, hormone that is the testosterone which is in excess. So for these kind of people, we first say what is her weight you haven't told and what is her age. Uh, reducing the weight may help her in improving the quality of the egg. The uh, PCO per se itself because of this androgen excess does have effect on the uh, quality of the eggs. No chance of improving egg quality before IVF for PCOD people. <clears throat> As I told, uh, uh, reducing weight and uh, using that metformin, that is um, uh, insulin sensitizing drugs, these all may help in improving the quality of the egg. First thing is reducing the weight. When you reduce the weight, the male hormone, that is the testosterone level comes down. This LH also reduces. The FSH LH ratio will be altered, what I said. That LH ratio also comes down. That also will help in improving the quality of the egg. This hormone imbalance has to be rectified to whatever extent possible. That is by reducing weight. All this can have an effect. How can I increase my fertility with PCOS? So increasing fertility is reducing weight. Weight, weight and weight. Because... If you are already lean uh, and you are not able to uh, have ovulation or regular periods, then having ovulation induction will help you. If you are on the high, heavier side, please do reduce your weight. There are many people who are um, uh, overweight, not getting period, but they will be able, they would have conceived on their own and they will not even know that they have conceived for two or three months because they will not be getting periods. Only after two months or I don't get periods at all. After three months, I'm not get, I haven't got in my period. They will go and have a check. That's when they come to know that they are already pregnant two or three months. PCOS cannot be cured. PCOS will be there. But only thing is you have you can reduce your um, that um, what to say hormone imbalance what is there only that 10 kilos you have reduced yes I agree but uh, PCOD will not cannot be cured only the hormone imbalance what is there that can be reduced to a certain extent can single follicle cannot be produced in PCOS because I get more follicles during periods uh, Follicles do come, but all will not mature. Only one will mature during your normal periods. Only if you have induction of uh, ovulation induction, you are taking treatment for, for fertility. Only then when we give medicine, there can be more follicles developing. But otherwise, if you are uh, naturally getting period or naturally ovulating, one or two will get will come to the dominance. All others will not come for the mature level. To get one dominant follicle also, hundreds of them will come for the race. But only one or maximum two in natural cycle, what I am talking is, will come to dominance. That is mature eggs, what I mean to say. Infertile women have periods. Yes, definitely they have periods. And only few of them do not get periods unless they take medication. But otherwise, uh, infertile women also get periods. That, but it may be irregular. How to detect endometriosis? Will it be detected in follicular follicle scan? Because I am having heavy pain in period. Um, endometriosis, yes. By scan, you can detect that is endometrioma. If there is this endometrioma or endometriotic cysts in the ovary, then of course, during follicular scan, you can make out. And having uh, heavy pain may not be only because of endometriosis. You need to get a scan done. They will tell you whether there is endometriosis. But if endometriosis is there, definitely it can be uh, identified on scan. Only if there is ovarian 
cyst that is endometriotic cyst is present then we can detect on regular vaginal scan what is difference between iui and ibf iui is when we take the husband sperm and we process it in the lab and the best quality sperm are put into the uterus that is we bypass the cervix vagina vagina cervix and put it into the uterus so that the sperm has to pass the uterine cavity the remaining part of the uterine cavity and the tube and fertilize in the uh, fertilize with the egg in the tube ivf is when we make you produce or when we make a woman produce many follicles and we take out those eggs <coughs> and mix the egg and the sperm and help or uh, make it to fertilize in the petri dish in the laboratory we and so the embryos or the fertilization takes place outside the body in iui fertilization takes place in the body uh, is that is the main difference Thank you.